Hi, today I'm going to talk about some of the common mistakes that people make uh, when they start a career in quantity finance. Uh, I've come across so many of them actually, so it's uh, difficult to cover all of them in a single video. I don't want to make it a very lengthy video, so I'll try to keep it short. Uh, some of the more common ones I'm going to discuss, obviously there are many more, maybe I can uh, make another video on the more such uh, mistakes that you know the, the newcomers make. But some of the things that you must uh, know, like the, the more important ones. Okay, so the first one is, is you know, the, I, I see some people in being interested in quant finance, many of them even reach out to me, but they haven't done any research as such what it is about. Uh, right, uh, they have not even Googled once, not even read uh, the Wikipedia page of you know financial engineering or quant finance, or for that matters, any finance. You don't have to just study, you know, or, or learn a bit about quant finance in order to know what it is. Just learn a bit about what is finance, what is economics. You know, there are people who have never read uh, uh, a financial newspaper in their life, and and yet they're interested in a career in quant finance. I don't understand that, right? Uh, either uh, you are not interested in finance, that's why you've never learned anything about finance. You've never even read uh, Wall Street Journal, The Economist, Financial Time, or in India, you have Economics Times, Live Mint. You have never gone through any business newspaper in your life. You've never read a business magazine. You have never uh, been interested in the field of finance. You have no interest in personal finance. You know, then I, I have no clue as to how you can ever be interested in the field of quant finance. So I think it's good to even have, uh, you know, some uh, basic understanding of finance before even you aspire to become a quant, right? Uh, do do reading, watch some movies. If you're not into reading, you know, just watch some movies related to finance and banking. There are many good documentaries on YouTube. Just go and watch some of these uh, documentaries on financial crisis. Uh, you know, the, the, there is a documentary, uh, I think BBC documentary or even The Economist documentary on financial crisis, 2008 financial crisis, uh, the Great Depression of 1920s and 30s, you know, just, you know, just watch some of these videos, uh, read the Wikipedia page of, uh, of various, you know, uh, financial terms, just uh, in, there is a site called um yeah, what is that called investopedia right just uh you know go through some of the articles right you will you will know quite a bit about uh finance and whether that interests you or not uh right <clears throat> and there, there's another section of the people who make this classic mistake right uh, people think that they're going to do you know mathematical research you know um more recently some people reached out to me i think Two of them uh, heavy into heavily into mathematics, um, theoretical physics. Uh, the thing that you know, quant finance is such a, an academic area, right? It's a highly academic area where they will do mathematical research, and that's it. Mathematics is everything that is um, uh, that is there in in quant finance. Uh, it's uh, it's not correct. Obviously, it's a very mathematical field. It's a very technical field, uh, but it's it's a very applied field. You are not going to do theoretical research in, in mathematics if you work in quant finance. So if you are uh, too much into those abstract concepts, you are uh, spending way too much time learning about real analysis, numerical analysis, um, then you are making a mistake, right? You need uh, elementary uh, uh, algebra, elementary calculus uh, in order to get started in quant finance. So you don't need that uh, sophisticated you know, two abstract mathematical uh, concepts in order to get started. Of course, you need some of that. But uh, if you have ever done even an undergrad level mathematics, you know, that's more than sufficient. Uh, you know, people talk about the derivative pricing models, how difficult they are, but but it's still the mathematics used there. It's still undergraduation level mathematics. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't spend too much time learning about uh, you know, postgraduate level mathematics or research level mathematics, probably that's not going to be of much use. Uh, some people thought, you know, a lot of physics theories are used in field of finance, so let's, you know, study quantum mechanics in detail. Uh, pretty much useless in the field of quantum finance. So if you're going to spend, uh, let's say, six months learning quantum, quantum mechanics because you want to work in quantum finance, that's a very bad idea. Uh, yeah. Then there is another section of people um, who are too much into coding, right? Um, and and you know they know 
they, a lot of them are compute, from computer science background. So for them, it's like quant finance is, is all about uh, coding, right? Writing code in Python or C++. There's too much into it. Actually, <clears throat> indeed, they're right. Actually, some of the quant finance stuff is heavily into coding, especially implementing uh, algorithm is, is heavily into coding. Uh, many companies build softwares around uh, algorithms, so they do need, uh, you know, software developers working for them. And, you know, I consider them as quants as well. Anybody who works with models doesn't have to build models, but anybody who is uh, is working around uh, mathematical modeling is a quant in my view, right? If you're working for Bloomberg, for example, as a software engineer and you are, you know, implementing some of the algorithms, uh, why not? You can call yourself a quant. That's fine, right? Maybe you are targeting just a one type of quantitative job, but, uh, you know, make no mistake to, to, uh, to you know, sort of uh, assume that, uh, you know, quantitative finance is all about coding. Uh, you know, if you're good at coding and if you uh, also learn mathematical modeling and have decent understanding of finance, your scope of you, the opportunities that you will be available to you will be a lot more actually compared to if you just focus on coding part of quant finance right so uh, beside coding also you know expand your uh, uh, education beyond coding that's what uh, my advice would be okay um then uh, there are a few other things i would like to share with you you know people uh, where people make mistakes especially the ones who begin um the career in, in quant finance uh, you know i see that uh, a lot of stu students actually they put a lot of emphasis on learning things but they have no clue as to how to find a job right uh, let me tell you this is perhaps the most difficult question i always get from my own students where you know they ask me okay how do we land up in a job right if you see most of the job uh, jobs advertised there uh, for experience professional so how do we get a job as a fresher right fresh out of university or somebody who, who is not from that field right it's definitely a good question and it's you know it should not be taken very lightly in my view right um let me tell you that a lot of the jobs are still for fresher it's just that they're not advertised right and how you get it there are many ways to it First of all, even if the job uh, the, the, the job that is uh, advertised is for experienced professional, you do not have any experience till you go ahead in applying, right? Because the hiring manager will have your CV. Otherwise, you know, there is no way to contact you, right? There is no way to know that somebody is looking for a job, right? Um, so, uh, but that's different in Europe, by the way. In Europe, there are dedicated jobs for fresh people um inexperienced people uh, that's also in the uk i'm sure also in the us but not definitely not in india except for campus placement people don't advertise uh, uh, jobs for freshers uh, but there are jobs uh, even uh, even uh, for the ones who, who are not in those campuses and so on uh, i personally have hired when i was in india uh, you know from uh, you know outside of the campus so it's definitely possible. It's just that you have to send your CV to right people, right? So yeah, do that and do research actually, right? Things do change. I have no clue as to what's going on now in India, but um, because you know I have not uh, been working in India for you know quite some time now, things do change. So do your research, do your homework as to how you can land up in a job. So doing a bit of research about the job market is very important. Um, one of the mistakes that people do is that, you know, people, a lot of people are very specific about what they want to do as a quant, right? Um, a lot of them, in fact, just far too many of them, just, uh, they just want to be uh, working as a quant in HFT firm, like in high frequency trading firms, right? Uh, I've said this many times on this channel that, you know, these jobs are very, very uh, scarce. Uh, and you know, chances of getting into an HFT form to work as a quant uh, is very slim. Okay, I'm not discouraging you, but that's a fact. There's simply not many jobs, right? Uh, of course, you can get into an HFT form and, and you can work as a quant, uh, but the competition is a lot more. If you just, you are very specific about your uh, aspiration, I think as a beginner, that's a bad thing, right? Uh, you really need to be flexible with, um, with that so go beyond this hft you know you can work as a quant in other fields uh, i 
I remember hiring someone uh, as a quant. Uh, I hired a Greek guy, a uh, very smart guy. He worked uh, with me uh, for some time. Um, and then uh, he moved to a totally different uh, role actually later on. Uh, he became a quant at a, at a wealth management firm doing wonderfully well there. Right. Um, so don't uh, worry too much about your first job actually. Get into some company, get some experience. You can always move from one place to the other uh, to the other places or places of your choice later on so be flexible with your uh, yeah with your options okay um yeah some people are not even flexible with uh, the programming language and all of that i think you know if you are into python and somebody asks you to work with r or shas or uh, you know or even even matlab you know don't say no to that i think some uh, entry level quants uh, make this mistake yeah there are other uh, section of people have come across who who think that quant finance is is just another data science sort of uh, uh, you know quant roles are just uh, data science roles uh, a bit different uh, but just data science so that's actually uh, to some extent true but but to a large extent also not true and i have had debate with uh, some of my colleagues whether you know we can indeed call quant finance is also data science i mean there is no definition as such right yeah, so you could call anything but but the thing is that the work is actually very different and many times data scientists coming from other areas when they work in finance, uh, many of them uh, have uh, many of them have a culture shock actually, um, because they don't realize that the, this the, the piece of work that they do in quantitative roles in finance is is in many ways quite different. Uh, so so be aware of that. I don't make that mistake. Do the research. You know, learn a bit. I made videos about the differences. Uh, just. Uh, go through that but there are also articles written on the internet so you can you can go through that um it, it could be that you, you you won't even like quant finance once you go through these articles and videos right uh, but that's that's good actually right it's better to uh, make a decision before you even entering into that fit right it's 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 good for you it saves it saves time for you so why not um another mistake people make is that um you know, uh, people think that this is such a technical role that nothing else matters except the, your technical skills. That's actually not true. Uh, in many quant roles, you will be required to write uh, professional level documents. Documents that will be shared with senior management, with the regulators, in some cases even, you know, the government bodies. So make sure that you have some skills in writing make sure that you are a people person right it's not like you will be working in silo sitting at the at a corner and writing your code all through the day that's not going to be the case if you want to work in quant finance you will be working in teams you will be interacting with a lot of stakeholders sometimes that part of work that type of work uh, won't be very fun but that is uh, you know part of your job you have to deal with that writing is one thing that many quants don't like but that's something you will be doing uh, if you work in quant finance so make sure that you have some experience with the writing documents or uh, you know making presentation and and and, and all, um, those non quantitative skills are also very important or the soft skills so these are some of the common mistakes i have seen people making when they start their career uh, in quant finance. there are actually many more right um one very in fact i would like to add one more thing here is that uh, after people start career in quant finance uh, a lot of them actually they are stuck in that you know the quantitative uh, area like they really want to specialize in models and, and programming languages and so on and so forth but many of them have no interest in understanding the business or or the products and and the regulations and so on and so forth um, initially uh, these things won't matter 
but uh, this these things will matter a lot once you become a senior analyst or senior expert then these things will matter a lot because you'll be interacting with people from front office um, even at a junior level you could be interacting with people from front office so that uh, will make it uh, you know very difficult for you unless you speak their language right you won't be able to communicate with them so very important that you pay attention to you know products and the regulations the markets and so on and so forth not as a, a fresher someone who is uh, you know looking to get a job in in quant finance but once you get a job i think that that's something to keep in mind right because before you get a job it's very difficult to you know um, have good understanding of products and and markets and how things work in the real world no books will tell you how things work in the uh, real world you will obviously learn some of the things from books and courses and so on but the real feel will come only when you actually get the real world experience right and that's something you cannot get before you start working but once you start working i think good to have you know good to spare some time in understanding uh, the real business right and the real business in quant finance could be the lending managing money or uh, or or you know trading of financial assets or valuations of financial assets uh you know make sure that you you know enough about these products all right these are some of the things i want to share with you if you have questions as always please let me know in the comment section you can always reach out to me also on my whatsapp or on my email id as always thanks for watching